Welcome to My Two Cents with Nikki Baccarel D'Angelo. In this week's episode, my first impressions of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Hello and welcome to another My Two Cents video, everybody. This video is about Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. For those of you that have been around, you've seen me do videos on quite a number of different sims over the years. Mostly Elite Dangerous, no, it's mostly Star Citizen, let's be serious. But I do have quite a number of videos on X-Plane, because I've been flying X-Plane since X-Plane 7, and I'm just in love with that sim because as a pilot, I can say the flight model is as close to the real thing as I've seen in a commercial sim yet, or I should say a hobbyist sim yet. I picked up Microsoft Flight Simulator because there's a lot of buzz around it, and I think the buzz is all about the scenery. The scenery is absolutely amazing, and I am sitting here on the ramp over at RYY, which is Cobb County International McCollum Field. This is a small field, it's only called an international airport because there's a customs building on site for international flights. And I believe that has something to do with FedEx buying a huge facility just to the, I want to say the south side of the field. It would be the uh, southwest side of the field to be exact. Not too far from where we are right now. Now, a couple of things I have to say is that the... It is just amazing. I, I do a lot of ortho for XP and X-Plane, and that's the kind of feeling I get here, only with much more detailed, much, much more detailed graphics than what I've been able to gather. Now, I have six terabytes of ortho photo data for scenery running in X-Plane, and this just puts that to shame. So scenery-wise, this is amazing. Now, they do have some AI. I think it's Black Shark AI working in the background. And I believe what that's doing is looking at the images and trying to draw and render the buildings that appear in those, in, in those satellite imagery from Bing into 3D textures. And I, I do have to say, when I fly over Atlanta later on in this video, in the rain, it does a fairly decent job of it, but... It's not perfect. You can tell that it's 3D modeling inside of like a Bing map, right? You can, you can tell that. So in the non-handcrafted areas, I think it's going to be a little bit eh. And in the handcrafted areas, I think it's going to be amazing. Now, this really does need an internet connection for you to fly, which I don't think most people have a problem with today because... If you're a hobbyist sim, maybe you're taking part in Pilot Edge or a VAT sim and things like that. And that would also need to have one of those internet connections going on. But you have a lot of data streaming down from the cloud to your device, whether you're playing from a PC or a PC or a PC. Yeah, I said that because X-Plane, of course, plays on Mac and PC, Android and X-Plane and shares a flight model and other elements across all of those devices. I, I, I might sound a little bit um, challenging towards Microsoft, and that's because whenever they make Flight Sim, it's really about making an engine to generate funds. Now, I don't have the Sim fully set up. I've found trying to assign controls is anything other than intuitive. I, I guess I am spoiled by X-Plane where I push a button and it shows me what's assigned to it now. And then I can assign any action in a list, in the whole list, to that one button on my HOTUS. I haven't found an intuitive way to get around the interface for setting up my controls yet. And I've actually been frustrated about that. So in the intuitiveness of setting that up, I'd give it a D plus at best. Um, I would say it's closer to uh, D minus. It, it's not a failure. It's got a long way to come. I would say maybe move it up to a C because they include an image of the HOTUS that you're using 
unless you're using a warthog flight system with a different stick than the one that it comes with. But anyway, it, it's... I, I just found sending controls to be harder than Star Citizen, which... Think about that if you watch my Star Citizen videos. Setting up controls in Star Citizen is, again, anything other than intuitive, but at least it's better than Flight Sim right now. I would say in a list of the games that I play, it would be X-Plane, Elite Dangerous, Star Citizen, and then Flight Sim. And I hope they get better at that. So I don't have all my controls set up here. I, I didn't know if I can set up one of the buttons or one of the hat switches for me to go up and down the lists on the left. I'm going to have to do that research. I shouldn't have had to, and as a first impressions video, I think I have every right to give it the grade I'm giving now. Now, maybe after watching a couple of videos, having some people comment on this, I'll learn a little bit more about how to set that up. But for me, for the person coming into a sim, it should have been something that was right off the bat easy. Now, better than Star, um, I have to say it this way, better than not Star Citizen, but Flight Sim previous versions like Flight Sim X is the way that you set up your flight. Uh, it's a dream. You get a world, you pick two airports, you can zoom in on it, pick the parking spot that you want to be in. I would say it's close to X-Plane in that situation. And then you can set to fly in real weather, which for some reason I've chosen to fly in real weather in all of my flights so far. Um, there's no some reason about that. That's how I fly most of the time. And it does a fairly decent job at weather. I would say it does a great job at weather. I would say it's one of its strengths. And you can see the water droplets and you know the raindrops over here just hitting my window and sliding back. I don't see physics really involved, do I? Yeah, I see them moving back. Anyway, that, that was the beginning of my flight. Let's move on a little bit later in my flight. Let's talk about some things that I found. So one thing I have to say is that when I'm comparing the two Sims, X-Plane and Microsoft Flight Simulator, always, I've always compared them on one thing first and foremost, because as a pilot, I want to know that when I get into an aircraft in one of these sims, that it actually feels and flies much more realistic and, well, as realistic as it can. And I picked a Cessna, I picked a Cir um, not a Cirrus, this would be the DA-40, and I'd have to say there's a huge improvement in the flight model over Flight Sim X. Huge. I mean, drastic. But it's still not X-Plane. Now, that's not bad. That's not good. That's just, it is what it is. And I'd have to say it this way. I'm not flying a just flight aircraft. I'm not flying an A-to-A -A aircraft. I'm not flying um, any of the amazing aircraft that are in X-Plane that some of the high-level modelers make. And I, I'm not even talking about visual models. I'm talking about flight models. I'm flying the stock aircraft, so stock Cessna, I made a flight before this uh, last night. Um, I, I, I fly a lot of flights when I start flying a sim for the first time that I've made in real life so I can compare scenery and runways, all sorts of things to what I know exists. So in this situation, I, I'd have to say um, I'd, give, I'd give the stock Cessna 172 a thumbs up, especially because you could buy the Reality Expansion Pack for it inside of X-Plane. But Flight Simulator, nonetheless, um, I'm going to say it this way. I'm going to have a lot of criticisms of this sim. It's an early release, but I'm going to say this. It's definitely 100% worth the buy. So although I'm going to criticize a lot of elements of it, I'm going to say it's worth the buy. Now, the scenery by itself is just absolutely awe-inspiring. It, it, it makes me just... It, I, I am... I am tongue-tied. <laughs> the cat's got my tongue. I think it's wonderful. I mean, some things look a little weird, like off in the distance over there, you can see, like, Vulcan, which is the huge obstacle to the expansion of Cobb County International. It's a... It, it's a gravel pit. It's a quarry right there on the north side of the airport. 
and it looks kind of odd, but at least it looks like it's a depression. It looks realistic. And X-Plane, it's not. So this crushes X-Plane in every way and scenery so far. Um, I would say that rendering, like with scenery at high, I'm not at ultra, but I'm at high. I'm getting similar frame rates than I would get on high inside of X-Plane, right around 50, 40. And my system is no slacker. It's not high end, but it's definitely about enthusiast level. It's a 3700X, slightly overclocked. Ryzen Master does what it does to do that. I have a 2080, but it is like one of the revision ones from EVGA. I love EVGA. I buy their products all the time. And it's not the thicker one, it's the thinner one, so a little bit less performance than the one that has the better fans. I have uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM. I have a 970 Pro. This is not on a 970 Pro. This is on a crucial 2 gigabyte, um, regular 2.5 inch hard drive, uh, 2 terabytes, sorry. Uh, and you're going to need space for this. You're going to need at least 1.1 terabytes from what I know. So I, I took off in this aircraft, and I am not sure if this flight is my flight to Athens or if this is my flight to uh, Falcon Field down in the southern part of the uh, Atlanta, just south of Hartsfield. And just from the fact that I feel like we're flying over south towards Kennesaw Mountain, which is over to our right, uh, left over there, I'm thinking that this is that flight. I'm kind of energized right now, and I apologize for it because I've been waiting for a really good um, replacement or sequel to Flight Sim for a long time because I believe that in this space, you have to have X-Plane and you have to have Flight Sim because the two of them make both of them better. And that's going to be very important for me because I want the best damn flight simulator ever. And the only way you're gonna get there is if you have two companies pushing the limits. Maybe one pushes flight dynamics and the other one pushes scenery and they continually feed off of each other and make elements of their sim that isn't as good as the other one better. And I think that is the best thing that could happen to the flight sim market. So I'm gonna continue to fly X-Plane. I'm gonna continue to fly flight sim and I'm gonna have a great time. But let's just talk about scenery again. Because Flight Sim 2020 is all about the scenery. And I'm gonna say it's about the clouds too. I am getting a really good feeling about the clouds that are in the game right now. And I can't imagine what it's gonna be when Active Sky and SkyMax Pro and all these other companies that alter the weather and alter the way that clouds look and the atmosphere looks. I can't wait to see what they actually do to make these even better. But right now, I, I, I like it. I like it a lot. I, I, I don't know if I have the expertise to say it's perfect. Uh, I do have the experience of flying in this area in similar weather to say it's damn near perfect. So scenery, amazing, but I'm going to say there are some things that really do annoy me about the scenery that they have. It looks good from afar. It doesn't look as good up close, except around airports. So I'm sure they're doing something akin to what you do when you're setting up Ortho 4XP and having the resolution of the images that they use for the airports be a lot higher than resolution of other places. But what I did find is that their database of airports, based on the three that I've been to, may be a much older database. Okay, right there you saw me trying to test out the flight model, and I'm hitting that rudder hard, and although I only have one flight in a DA-40, I just... It, it just had a little bit more of a wobble in real life, and a little bit more of a wing tip, you know, wing tilt or wing banking when you would deflect the rudders fully like that. So I took off of McCollum, which is uh, K-R-Y-Y, and I have to say the airport runway that they have there is the runway from about six years ago, five years ago. Since then, there's been extensive upgrades of the airport. Now, 
the AI is supposed to be able to build these airports in the background, and I don't know how often, often they're going to input updated data from Bing to have the AI go back and update airports. I'm hoping it's going to be more often, but one thing I like about X-Plane is that it gave people, regular people, everyday people, the opportunity to go in and update the data for their airport, to take upon themselves learning the tool with which to make an airport. Now, there are a couple things I do want to say about Microsoft Flight Simulator that's amazing that X-Plane's been doing for a while, and that's going to be the new sloped runways, and the runways actually show the bumps and dips that are in almost every runway in the world, and I think that's amazing. Right now, we're flying over KMGE, which is Dobbins Air Reserve Base, and I'd have to say again here, there's been some major updates over the last uh, number of years and they're not shown here. Now Georgia had an aviation um, referendum, I guess you want to call it, that happened uh, quite a bit ago and is still in the process of being done. They're, they're upgrading all of their airports that are above a certain level. I forget what level that would be. And they're upgrading runway sizes, so runway lengths and widths, upgrading services, upgrading lighting, upgrading nav aids, all of that stuff to make it easier for corporate and for the movie industry to get their aircraft in and out. Here I am, about ready to start getting rid of the most annoying thing that's been bothering me. And that is those, you don't know how to fly, this is how you... The notifications that tell you how to climb, how to descend, how to take off. And I'd like to say, once you see that once or twice, there should be a button right on it that tells you that I don't want to see this anymore. But I had to go on my iPad, figure out where this setting was, and go in and turn it off because it was starting to annoy me. So I'm not reviewing any handcrafted scenery right now. What I'm doing is I'm reviewing the scenery that's in the game. And what I'd have to say is, right now it still looks like the image, but as you get closer, you can see that it is a 3D representation of all the buildings that are down there. Nothing's perfect. Everything is a approximation of what the real thing looks like. And I would say that I give that a nice heavy-duty B+. Plus. Um, when you compare it to everything else that's out there, it would be an A+. Plus. But there's room for improvement on every sim, even when it's doing it better than all the others. So I, I think that Microsoft re needs to receive the most kudos for this scenery engine because it's amazing. The autogen gets kind of wacky sometimes, but I haven't seen it too wacky. I've seen... I've seen trees growing in buildings. I've seen trees growing up out of um, roadways and that's just something that over time as they improve the algorithm on that AI things should be a little bit better. But here's one of the things that I was talking about. These are the approximations of the actual buildings that are in downtown Atlanta. Yes, when I say downtown Atlanta you would expect lots of bigger buildings. I don't have this on the ultra graphic settings. So what you're seeing is mo the most important buildings down there, including Peachtree Tower, the West End, the W, and a couple of others. So I'm about ready to turn in towards the area that I would normally be in two weeks, which is the area that is downtown Atlanta where they have Dragon Con, which will not be going on because of the wonderful um, things that can't be mentioned on YouTube right now. So I'm satisfied with the game. I know I, I'm picking, and I still feel like the flight model is a little laser-focused, but the scenery is making up for my diminished loving of that. And I think that something like flight model could probably be corrected by me getting an aircraft from Just Flight when they come out, or from A to A, which actually spends the time to model all the systems and update the fly, flight model. Now, I don't know 
how the flight model works inside of Flight Sim. I did not do that research and I apologize for that. But I know how intricate the flight model is in X-Plane, so much so that the U.S. Air Force contracts Austin Myers to make aircraft for them to fly in the sim so they can train. Because, you know, the Air Force, after years and years and years, has figured out that new pilots that have spent hours on flight sims actually do better in training than pilots that have never spent time in flight sims. Go figure. Who would ever, ever, ever believe that? Well, all of us that have been using flight sims forever. At the very, very least, it makes you better with your instruments. At the very best, now with Microsoft Flight Simulator, it will make you better at VFR because you could actually see the real buildings, the real roads, the real landmarks when you're going on a cross-country flight and you're doing, say you're practicing for your long cross-country, if they still require that, you're going to be able to fly that and see the landmarks that you will be passing over. And I think that's, I just think, without a doubt, that's awesome. Now, with Auto 4 XP, I get that same experience, but Autogen, Scenery Engine, things like that, they all need to be updated in X-Plane. And they spent so long implementing Vulcan, which is amazing, that uh, I'd have to say they probably fell behind on some of the other things. But now they can open up their development cycle and improve X-Plane and at least bring it up to the caliber of Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I think that over the next five years, you'll start seeing these two sims nudging each other. I am not aware if Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport is a handcrafted airport. I did fly over. I had quite a number of AI planes that were supposed to be in the air. I set it to 33, and I didn't hear any traffic. I didn't see any traffic. I didn't feel like there was anything going on in the airport, so I must have had a setting incorrectly. I was hoping to fly over Hartsfield Jackson or ATL with a lot going on on the ground so you would be able to see that. And I'm not sure what I have to do in the settings to make that happen. I'll get that worked out in the future and in my future videos you'll see that. But as of right now, all I have to say is my first impressions are I like it. But it's mixed because I feel like flying an X-Plane still feels like flying the real aircraft. And yes, I know X-Plane has aircraft from A to A, from Just Flight, and others that are just amazing. But they're amazing representations of the systems of the aircraft. The flight model is still something that's burnt, that is burnt right into the flight sim itself. And the, the Cessna, which I gotta say, it doesn't have the best systems modeling inside of X-Plane, but it has a better flight model feel than this one does. And I'm just wondering if that's because the Cessna in this one was made by Carinado. I'm not sure. Now, I, I'm not a Carinado hater. Some people are like, oh, they're all flash and no substance. I personally love the Carinado aircraft because at times, if I want something that I'm going to fly that's realistic, I'm going to fly the Airfoil Lab Cessna or the King Air. Um, but, or, or something from V Flight Air or something from Just Flight. But Carinado just gives me those beautiful aircraft that if I do want them to be more realistic, I just buy a reality expansion pack. So it gives me those options. I don't know if that's going to be able to be done here. I don't know. So I, I am so conflicted over what to give this flight sim. I'm going to tell you, buy it, because I think if you're a flight sim hobbyist, this is a buy, because, or a flight sim enthusiast, because I don't, I, I've never seen graphics like this in a sim before, and it just makes me... I, I've been waiting for this all my life. It's like the first time I stepped into my Aurora in Star Citizen. I was waiting for that all my life. I've been waiting for this. Being able to actually fly over the world I live in, this, to me, is amazing. It could be better. 
It could be better. And that's something that a work in progress, an early access program will always deliver. It will always be better in the future. So Microsoft, a thumbs up, not two. I think it's great, great scenery. A little bit more work needed. I didn't experience any bugs. I love the weather. I love the scenery. I'm still up in the air on the flight model, but I've only flown the Cessna 172 and the DA-40. I'm going to try some other aircraft and see how I feel. I think I'll try the SR-22. I've had enough time in some of the SR-22s in X-Plane to give an idea of how they fly. I haven't experienced any real turbulence in this, so I can't tell you how accurate that is. But what I can tell you is flying in marginal VFR conditions, the sim is actually pretty decent. Folks, that's my first impressions video. It's not really a review. It's just, what do I think after flying three flights? I hope you like this video. If you do, click that thumbs up button below. If you do subscribe to the channel, please click the notification icon so you get notified of all my future videos. And you all be safe out there. And I will talk to you soon.